By re-signing Christian Barmore, the New England Patriots have officially made franchise history as Christian Barmore is now the largest non-Tom Brady contract in Patriots franchise history. Pats Nation, let me tell you, I am feeling great. I am feeling on top of the freaking world this week. Why? Well, the Patriots just went out and had a pretty dang good draft. They get the franchise quarterback. They doubled down at wide receiver. I'm absolutely on top of it, especially with the guys that they got. We broke that down. Check that down on the channel. But now they are re-signing one of the most pivotal players to their team from this past 2023 season. And a lot of things went wrong in 2023, but Christian Barmore? Christian Barmore wasn't one of them. Christian Barmore was really one of the only reasons that the Patriots stayed in games because of his breakout season. So just in case you haven't heard, the Patriots are re-signing Christian Barmore. I shouldn't say re-signing, but signing him to a contract extension, a four-year contract extension worth $92 million. Now, you're going to hear that, and you're going to say, well, two, four, six. Patriots Global, what is he making? He's making around $20 million annually. Now, of course, we know that's not really how contracts work, right? It's going to be broken down differently into what he's making each year. We don't really have the terms of that deal yet. When we do, we will discuss them. But right now, Christian Barmore, with that contract extension, is only the 12th highest paid defensive tackle. We were talking about Christian Barmore going in and being, you know, a top, maybe six or a top seven paid defensive tackle. Definitely, definitely somewhere within the top 10. And even after this deal, he doesn't even crack that. This is a steal for the Patriots. I was really scared that Christian Ballmer was going to end up leaving the Patriots at the end of the 2024 season because he was going to get this mac excuse me, massive lucrative contract, which by the way, I do believe that if he hit free agency, he was going to get a deal that, Unfortunately, the Patriots just were not going to be able to meet. So a freaking plus by Gerard Mayo and Elliot Wolf for getting this done before the season starts and before he becomes a free agent. Because if he, you know, you have to compete with him in free agency. Again, I think you're having to, to pay him much, much more. In fact, if we actually look at it, we can look at the highest paid interior defensive lineman right now to kind of talk about who the players are that Christian Barmore is kind of centered around in terms of his contract. So the highest paid defensive tackle obviously is Christian Jones or Christian Jones, Chris Jones from the chiefs. Yeah. We're not on that, uh, that, that name to name basis. I, I can't call him Christian, um, but he is making about $31.7 million per year. Aaron Donald is making about $31.6 million a year, even though he did just retire Christian Wilkins, who honestly, maybe this is a hot take. I feel like Christian Barmore, is going to be on the same level of Christian Wilkins. I would say right now he's probably still about a step behind where Christian Wilkins is, but I, I truly do believe that Christian Barmore, especially after the year that we just saw, can continue to build off of that and get up to where Christian Wilkins uh, is in terms of, of, of his play. And Wilkins is the third highest paid interior defensive lineman making $27.5 million that he signed with the Raiders this offseason. Then you have Justin Metabuke from the Ravens. He's making $24.5 million. He also signed a, a contract extension with the Ravens this offseason. Both Wilkins and Metabuke both were expected to hit free agency. Wilkins obviously leaves. Metabuke stays with the Ravens. And again, you go back to the value because you can see you can see that these guys hit free agency and got these big, massive, lucrative deals. Keep in mind, too, they're older than Christian Barmore is. So with that being said, the Pages are getting a younger player who they don't have to give nearly as much money to. That is the value in getting those contracts done before they hit free agency. Then you get into guys like Derek Brown, Quinion Williams, uh, Jeffrey Simmons, DeForest Buckner, Dexter Lawrence. Now, I will say. He isn't on this list yet. This list hasn't been updated. But if you look at the average annually, he's right around where Javon Hargrave is getting paid with the 49ers. Respectfully, Christian Barmore is a better interior defensive lineman than Javon Hargrave is. Even uh, the Seahawks' Leonard Williams is getting paid more. Dexter Lawrence is getting paid more. 
I think that Christian Bummer is better than Deron Payne, is better than DeForest Buckner. He's probably around, like I said, I think he can get to being the level of Christian Wilkins, but right now, I mean, he probably is, I would say, like a, a Dexter Lawrence or, or maybe a Leonard Williams, and again, is still getting paid less than those guys are. The thing, too, is that Christian Barmore did break out this season, and that was with no help along the defensive line. It's not like you can say, well, he broke out because he had Josh Uche, who was having a breakout year. Matthew Judon on the other side collapsing the pocket. Offensive linemen just weren't able to compensate for everybody that the Patriots had on the defensive line. New England was banged up all over their defensive line this past season. Matthew Judon was out for the entire season. Well, you know, for out the first couple of weeks. But after that, was out the entire season. Josh Uche missed like half the season. The Patriots' best defensive lineman the entire year was Christian Balmore. He was getting double, even triple teamed at times and still had a breakout season. I want to be very curious to see the season now he's going to be able to have, knowing that he's locked up, knowing that he just had, you know, a, 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 a career season. How can we build off of that, especially now that offensive linemen are going to have to compensate for Josh Uche and they're going to have to compensate for Matthew Judon? They're not going to be able to double and triple team Christian Barmore every single play. Now, statistically, this past season, Christian Barmore put up six passes defended, one forced fumble, eight and a half sacks, 64 total tackles, 13 tackles for loss and 16 quarterback hits. That compares to what he put up in 2022 when he had one pass defended, zero forced fumbles, two and a half sacks, uh, 23 total tackles, three tackles, or I should say two tackles for loss, and seven quarterback hits. He more than doubled his statistics this past season. Christian Barmore is an absolute force to be reckoned with. And the only thing that I really even have to say is thank you to Elliot Wolf, because the Patriots are having a much better offseason than a lot of people realize. I understand that it's not going to get them back to being in contention year one. But respectfully, if you thought the Patriots in one offseason without Bill Belichick and Tom Brady were going to be back into contention, you weren't living in, in, in real life. You were living in this imaginary fantasy which, trust me, all of us want to be in right now, but realistically, it just doesn't make sense. What the Patriots are doing in one offseason and showing that they're willing to re-sign the players that actually produce for them and are actually building for their future because Christian Barmer is only 24 years old. They get their star interior defensive lineman. They just drafted, hopefully, their franchise quarterback. They are doing everything right so far. And like I said, Christian Barmore is the 12th highest paid annual interior defensive lineman. And to talk about some of his statistics even more from this past season, he was eighth highest uh, graded defensive tackle with an 83.8 overall grade, seventh best defensive tackle in pass rush with an 84.9 overall grade. The best thing about Christian Barmore is that pass rush ability. And we saw even in this draft with the amount of defensive tackles that went, especially way earlier on than we expected, that is a premium in the NFL. Having a guy in the interior that cannot just stop the run but gets to the quarterback is something so valuable because edge rushers, you can find them. Edge rushers are important. They're good, but you can collapse the, the, the outsides of the pocket and the quarterback can kind of just step up in the interior and still make a play. If you have an elite interior pass rusher, the quarterback has nowhere to step up. And now he has to get mobile and, and run out wide and that's a lot of times when edge rushers are going to have better statistics because they can finish off the sacks. And that's what the Patriots have right now in Christian Barmore. Now, he does still have to get a little bit better in defending the run. He took a big step forward this past year in that area, but that is where he definitely could still be a little bit better. And I think that's what's going to separate him from some of the more um, elite and, and premier interior defensive linemen in the league. But guys, I am ecstatic. Absolutely love this move. I tweeted out, Patriots are re-signing the best defensive tackle in the AFC East. Kind of trying to troll Jets fans a little bit there. But you know what? You know what? Dare I say he has the potential. He has the potential. What are your guys' thoughts on this, though? Let me know in the comments section below. Remember,